Hi Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your September 2020 full moon reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. So before we, re we begin this reading, let's clear the energy space raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from your body, like storm clouds. Feeling yourself become calm, relaxed, and at peace as you enter into this loving, safe space. All right. So first, I'm going to be moving your Moonology and your Queen of the Moon cards over to the side. These will be layered on top of the tarot to really give Luna, the moon, a voice of her own. The moon is laid out here from full moon to full moon, from Pisces full moon to Aries full moon, the 2nd of September and the 1st of October. So let's see here. How will Sagittarius be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Sagittarius be affected by the September 2020 full moon. How will Sagittarius be affected by the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. So the left hand side, this is your inner self. The middle is your heart, your emotional self. The right hand side is your public self. We have the Four of Swords, Battle Well Fought, the Ace of Swords, Divinity Blessing You, the Five of Pentacles, Needing to Claim, Feeling on the Inside of Wealth Instead of the Outside of It, and the Ace of Cups, many divine gifts here for your inner self. It's beautiful. The Two of Swords, the Queen of Cups, you're definitely taking this gift of emotional development and of cleansing the emperor you're strongly connected to the full moon in october in aries because emperor of course represents aries you have the three of cups right here there have been heartbreaks and pains and disappointments that have held you back in the past you have the moon shining through strong pisces energy so that's amplifying this pisces full moon this this is also a time frame of February 19th to March 20th, the moon is really going to be a great pull for you in the public arena. The world opens up. The three of wands. You have the repeat of the number three. Divinity guides you and is with you. And you have the chariot right here, which is Cancer Energy, a time frame of June 21st to July 22nd. All right. So this moon is astoundingly intense for you. So just know that you're going to feel this moon coming before the first, before the second of September. And you're going to feel very drawn to 
its bringing of balance and practicality. This moon is the mystic's moon, of course. It is the, the dreamer's moon, the poet's moon. It's even the witch's moon. And that is because, above all, it's the high priestess moon. This is the moon that the high priestess guides. This is the moon where the veil is lifted from your eyes, where you see things so much more clearly. And that can be really overwhelming. This is part of your divine power during this time. For you, Sagittarius, you are a seeker of knowledge. You are a person who digs deeper. And here you are going to find that you see people for who they truly are, not who they want to be. And that can be very disconcerting. All right. As you are moving forward, you are also going to find that you're very connected to the spirit world during this time. You're very connected to the passion of understanding, to this sense of, of having having premonitions almost. It's like you, you see things before they happen. You're guided to a truth that is absolutely a part of you. And you're going to see that you are astoundingly sensitive, astoundingly curious, astoundingly, yeah, astoundingly driven by the divine. And this is very much in your inner self. This may not be something you feel comfortable sharing with other people. And that is, of course, completely up to you. But this compassion moves you forward in a way that you thought, wow, I didn't think life could be like this. I didn't think I could move forward this way. And yes, at times it is overwhelming because there isn't that sense of naivety to the world. But Sagittarius, you're not a person to really indulge in that naivety anyway. You like the truth. You like deeper knowledge. You like deeper understanding. And as you do so here, you are finding yourself coming to balance with what you spiritually want and what you practically desire to the way that you want to move forward in life and how you need to move forward for your soul. This is also going to be a time where you crave sleep and meditation and prayer. Those are going to be very important things to you. But this is also a time where that really good side of the cravings can turn to alcohol and drugs and sleep to find oblivion because you are going to find that you see the harshness of the world so much more openly and honestly than before. So just be mindful of this as you're moving forward and call on your angels, call on your spirit guides, call on the power of, yeah, of those who have passed that guide you forward to really, to really help you during this time, to move you in the balance because there is a sacred wisdom about you that is, that is breathtaking, but it's also astoundingly intense. It's astoundingly powerful. It leads you to the new beginnings on the 17th of September, which is the new moon. And the new moon is in Virgo. And this is a time to give rather than take. And for you, Sagittarius, you are a person who isn't really a taker at all. And here, when it's giving rather than taking, it's giving yourself knowledge and understanding and a look at the deeper desire of what you want. It's giving to yourself the, the passion and the truth and the abundance. And as you do so, you're going to find that you walk through that portal to a new phase in life. This is the beginning. And as you start this beginning, you know something new is coming. You know that this is a start of something that is more aligned with you than before. And this is like planting seeds. And this is knowing, okay, yes, every seed does not yield a plant, of course. But this is sitting there and saying, I am nurturing and I am preparing for the beauty that comes. And as you do so, as it is a time of nurturing, it's a time of giving rather than taking. Just think of when you're, you know, raising a child or, you know, if you have a puppy or a kitten, and I know they're not the same, I do get that. But just so that everybody can relate, they take a tremendous amount of energy and time and commitment. And it can feel almost as if, you know, you, you, you lose you for a bit of time. And here, this giving rather than taking, spirit does not want you to lose you in the act, but knows that there is a nurturing here that you are deeply indebted to and deeply, you know, involved with, and that it is actually going to be rising you up. So there is something here where you'll sit there and say, oh, it's, it's like my baby. It's, it's a project that I'm working on. It's a relationship that I'm, I'm fostering, I'm growing. And here, around the 17th of September, is a time where new seeds start taking, taking sprouts, start taking root, where you start to see things become a little bit easier because you start to see a, a greater truth 
guiding you forward. And that's going to be something that's rather exciting for you because you've put in all this time and all this effort and you've given rather than taken and you are, you are rewarded for it. It might not be in that firework, you know, all the neighbors can see it type of way, but it's in that gentle way that touches your, your heart and empowers your soul. And it leads you to the full moon in Aries, which is a fiery climax approaches. There is a fiery sense of things coming together, of you seeing what is, is needed and desired, and you being astoundingly passionate. And you, you will feel this in your heart because you're at a crossroads here that we can see with the two of swords. And then you have the queen of the heart coming over your heart. And it's like, this is my love. This is my desire. And it moves me towards my throne, towards something that I thought, oh, it just can't be. Because Sagittarius, you're the calmest of the fire signs. You just are. You have this passion, this fire, this, you know, gregarious nature. You are, you're brilliant. But you are also the calmest of the fires. And so here, when you have this connection with your heart and you have this passion of Aries come forward, it can be breathtaking for you. You could be like, oh my gosh, because you're so driven, you're so focused, you're so, you know, honing in on things and stubborn. You're going to find that it increases a stubbornness, which yes, you will like, but you can also find it being a bit like, okay, I know I'm being a bit too intense type of thing going on, but that's because you're breaking away from the hurts and the pains. And that's really going to start here. It starts around the 17th. And you are going to be feeling this for all of the September full moon, the Pisces full moon. You're going to see it start. You're going to see pathways open up to you. It's, you're very connected to, to this moon right here with this water sign, okay? And, of course, Pisces is a water sign. And it starts to open up the world for you. And you start to see things much more readily, much more assuredly. And as you move forward in this time, you really are going to be protected by the mama bear, by the bear spirit. The bear spirit here says, take time out. It's take time out to nurture and to care for the seeds that you planted over your heart. But this is also having dominion over your world, having authority over yourself, things being larger than life, and you being larger than life. With this protection, you find yourself very guided to protect those who are weaker than you, to really stand up for those with whom you don't feel have, have a voice. And here, that is exactly what the mama bear spirit is doing with you is sitting there and in those instance, instances where you would think, oh, I can't do this. Oh, I don't know where I stand. I don't know what I want. I feel overwhelmed. I, I, I'm questioning. I, I just don't know. The mama bear comes in and is like fiercely protective of you. You start to say, oh, I get it. I see it. I understand it. And then you start moving forward. Now, I know people say, what about the papa bear? All right. Well, if you've ever been anywhere where there are bears, mama bears, you do not mess with them at all. The papa bear goes off and does their thing, but the mama bear protects their cubs. And if you come close to a mama bear's den or if their cub wanders, you know, around where you are, you better hightail it out of there and you better not mess with that cub because the bear will take you down without even a moment's hesitation. And that's the energy that's around you, taking down the negativity, taking down the anger, taking down the frustration that comes. This mama bear is like, no, nobody's messing with my Sagittarius. And that's really cool. It then leads you to the owl spirit. You see clearly now, and you do. You see clearly. You see what has been desired. And this is because you're so strongly connected with the high priestess. This is a deep connection to wisdom. This is a sharper vision and a keener sense of intuition and observation. You see what people do not want you to see. And that can be very disconcerting but it is also going to be astoundingly empowering for you. It's going to help the way that you make connections. It's going to help the way that you move forward. It's going to help what you see, what you desire, what you want from this world. And it leads you to the spirit animals of October, which seem to be rather contrary, but are absolutely amazing because we have the crow spirit and the dove spirit. The crow spirit and the dove seem like they are opposites because a group of crows is called a murder of crows. And the dove is, of course, a harbinger of peace. So when you see the dove, when you see the crow spirit, you're going to think, oh man, that's not a good sign. Or are you, for a lot of you Sagittarians, you're actually going to see crows kind of where you are, or birds that make you think of crows. And here, the crow represents change. Here it says, co-create with spirit. So the crow is co-creating with spirit, is connecting you with spirit in a profound way. 
because it brings change. It brings sacred law. It brings a sense of trusting your intuition and your integrity and knowing yourself, speaking your truth. It has you empowered. And as you are empowered, it brings with it personal transformation. And it brings with it messages that need to be heard, but are very often ignored by us. Where we sit there and think, oh, I'm being silly. Oh, I'm, I'm being, you know, this way or that way. It's like, no, you're being spot on. Listen, there is something beautiful that is coming that is overlooked because it's not wrapped in this shiny, beautiful packaging that we want it to be wrapped in. Think of the crow. The crow is a bird that we usually don't look twice at, but it's gorgeous. Look at the indigo and the, and the deep, you know, royal blue at his chest. You're going to be finding that once, what once seemed so ordinary has become extraordinary for you. It moves you to the dove spirit, which is also a harbinger of, messenger, of messages, a bringer of messages. And here you're going to find that it brings messages of hope and of course peace, but it brings them to the hurting hearts, to the sorrow and the despair. And you might be having a really great month, right? A really great time. But there's always something that makes us doubt ourselves, something that makes us question. And that's going to be when you get the message from the dove. You might hear doves cooing in your neighborhood. You might, you know, see an image of a dove. And that's when your heart starts to kind of lift a little bit. It's gentle and compassionate and really connects you with the gentle compassion of this Pisces full moon. It leads you to releasing the pains of your past that have held you back and moving forward into a future that you desire. And as you do this, what's very interesting is that here you're crowned by the Four of Swords and in your, in your intuitive personal self, right? And here in your heart, you are rooted with the Three of Cups. So both of these show me that you have been through a really hard time and that's what Spirit is saying. Spirit is saying, you know, you have a four and it counts down then to a three. And this is a flowing conscious line, which is really quite beautiful. And what I see here with the four of swords and what spirit is saying is that you've been through the ringer. You have been. The four of swords is to remind us, to remind us to be grateful and thankful for all that we have been through, all that has forged us and the way that we have come out the other side. And you might sit there and say, Dane, what I've been through in my life, I will not be thankful for. Spirit is saying there is a uniqueness to your soul and a power to yourself that you should not overlook, that you should be aware of because it's guiding you and it's leading you to something more. See everything that you have been through and instead of poo-pooing it, instead of saying, well, this is no different than anybody else, see the trial, see the, the beauty for what it is and give yourself honor and respect because of it as you move forward in love, as you move forward really connecting to everything that you have overcome and seeing everything that you want to be and seeing how these things work together, how these things move you forward. And as you look at them with the, with the Four of Swords, as you look at the hardships, the pains, the disappointments you've been through, you then have the Ace of Swords right here. This is God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe cutting through doubts and fears. There is knowledge, and this knowledge comes as you rest. This knowledge comes as you connect with what it is that you have been through, what it is that you have seen, your truth. It doesn't have to be anybody else's truth, and it might not be something that you're comfortable sharing, because I do see this. It's not a secretive time for you, Sagittarius. It is a personal time for you, and this moon really has you looking at things, not negatively, but much more honestly and has you looking at yourself much more honestly. And with the Four of Swords leading into the Ace of Swords, you see your passionate power. You see what it is that you desire. You see the way that you are moving forward and the doubts and the fears that have held you back, the chains of the past that say, well, you know, if you fail this time, you're definitely going to fail again. You know, you're too old, you're too young, you're too, you know, you're too everything. And instead of saying, I can't, you start to say, yes, I can. Yes, I can. You know, there's going to be something here where there's almost a feeling like I can't put one more thing on my plate. But when you put something on your plate that is of absolute value to you, that is so very important, it won't become a chore. It will start to become 
a part of your soul. You will start to become more yourself as you take on that knowledge and that understanding. And it leads you. It leads you with this grace, with this grace of a focus of truth. And this is something that's taken a long time. Swords are not forged overnight. And good swords, finely made swords, swords that divinity brings, these are things that are, are forged over lifetimes. And you're going to find that you see truths that were once denied to you. You start seeing patterns. You start seeing the way things work out. And you're like, oh, wow, that's it. It leads you to the five of pentacles. It leads you from thinking that you are at the outside of love, at the outside of wealth, at the outside of what you desire to being a part of it, to entering into the warmth that you desire, the wealth that you want within your life, the love, because spirit had me say first, love. What you truly want, what makes you celebrate your existence. It's no longer saying, I'm on the outside of this. I cannot be a part of it. It is saying, this is me. This is my truth. This is my passion. This is my desire. This is where I deserve to be. And this is how I'm moving forward. I'm not listening to the naysayers. I'm not listening to the doubters. I'm not listening to, to the people who bring up my failures. I am listening to me, to what I want and what I need, and how I desire moving forward within my life. And as you do so, okay, as you kind of walk through that door, it's kind of like you're passing this room and everybody's laughing and having a great time and it's warm and it's cozy and, you know, it smells like the best scent that you could possibly imagine. It smells like coming to your favorite place. It smells like your favorite thing. And you turn away because you think, I can't go in there. But everybody else is walking in. Everybody else is being welcomed. And it's like, no, that's, that's not for me. I, I'm on the outside of that wealth. I'm on the outside of that connection. And Spirit's saying, walk through. And even if, here is Sagittarius, even if you're just visualizing, even if you're sitting there, all right, and you see that room, and you see yourself on the outside, you see yourself cold and alone, and thinking, I just can't. I can't walk through that door. Keep visualizing that until you can walk through that door. Till you can be accepted the way that you want to. Because this doesn't have to be a room full of strangers. This can be a room full of your angels. A room full of your spirit guides. A room full of lessons that you've learned over lifetimes. And the knowledge and the power that you now hold. And it's walking through that door and embracing that truth, embracing your truth, no longer feeling like it's some sort of mystery. Everybody else has success in such a profound and beautiful way, but it's not for me. Everybody else has the life that they want, but I don't. Remember, everybody else edits their life and only lets you see what they want you to see. During this time, and one of the reasons why you're making this step is because you're so connected to the high priestess, right? that the veil is lifted, you see things more honestly, more truthfully, and you walk through in that knowledge. It leads you to the Ace of Cups. It leads you to God, Source, Spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing you a gift of love, of healing, of compassion. This is an anointing. This is a washing away of the doubts and the fears. This can bring tears. You, a lot of you Sagittarians, will find this to be an astoundingly emotional and astoundingly intense time. This is why you will be guided towards compassion and towards the deities that represent compassion. Now, whether this be Kuan Yin or the Virgin Mary or Hestia or whomever your deity of compassion is, you're going to find yourself very drawn to that energy, drawn to that love as you are healed, as you move forward. Tears will run freely. They will. And they will free you from the hurts and the pains that kept you moving towards what you loved because somebody when you were small, when you were impressionable, when you were vulnerable, spoke negativity over you, worried about the filling up of their cup first and not the moving forward of your truth. They didn't take their responsibility seriously. And the thing is, here, this person never will. This person who was supposed to guide you, who was supposed to love you, who was supposed to help you, who was supposed to be, you know, a parent, a friend, a teacher, a lover, that you needed, 
couldn't be. And you've taken that. And it's been part of the hurt of your heart. But the thing is, it's that it's their problem. It's not yours. It's not. They left you with a scar, and I can see that here. Spirit is showing it very clearly. And you were left thinking, there are two roads for me. And you weren't too keen on either one of them. This Pisces full moon is a full moon of healing. This Pisces full moon is a moon of understanding. And so as you see everything that you've been through, you see the pathways. And instead of sitting there and saying, there are only two roads, this moon brings another, brings more roads, brings more waves forwards, forward. It brings greater knowledge, information, and understanding. Let's you spread your wings. Find the truth to fly in. Understand your way forward. And as the roads open up that are more yours, that are more you, then other people walk. Because you're learning from others, right? We always learn from others. And they'll sit there and they'll say A or B. It has to be this way or it has to be that way. And you're sitting there and you're saying, no, it doesn't. It gets to be so much more. And it opens you to love. It opens you to the most compassionate of the queens. Now this is, of course, a water sign energy, a Pisces, a Scorpio, a Cancer, very strongly linking you to this Pisces full moon, has you here with Pisces in the public arena and with Cancer. So you're very strongly linked to Pisces and Cancer during this time. Scorpio, yes too, but not as intensely. You're going to find that you put the crown upon your head. You're going to find that you drink deeply of the waters of truth. You're also going to find that the, mo the moon clarifies and brings a silvery light to an understanding that was once lost. You do some of your greatest thinking at night. Some of your best ideas are going to come by the light of this moon. Have a pen and paper around you. Have, you know, your phone on you to take notes. You're embracing your heart. During this time, if you walk without your heart, Sagittarius, without your emotional truth and your emotional understanding, you will walk without a huge part of you. If you try to be too logical, if you put everybody else's needs before your own, you will walk without a huge part of you that makes you feel as if you're not walking in the right direction at all. This then leads you, as you embrace this queen of love, as you know you have this connection from the other world coming forward, from the spirit world guiding you, right? as you're seeing things so much more clear, clearly and honorably to yourself. This moves you to the emperor. And the emperor for me, oh, here, look at this. You have a repeat of the number four. This is saying that your home is going to be astoundingly important to you and also your body. So make sure that you're taking care of the place where you rest your head and also the temple of your soul. The repeat of the number one here shows that there is determination and stubbornness and blessings coming forward, and you're absolutely taking it. The mind and the heart are coming together. You're going to find it a lot easier to listen to the heart during this time than you will to listen to the mind. Make sure you don't ignore the mind just for the heart because you need that balance, Sagittarius. And you're actually very good at having that balance come forward, having that balance lead you to your truth. Don't overlook it now. This leads you to being the emperor. The emperor claims his throne. He knows his truth. The emperor for me, I always see as David in the Old Testament. King David, he was king of his people. He was powerful and he was born into that power, right? He was born for that greatness. But here's the thing. He was a man and he messed up. He was a human being and he made really big mistakes that cost others their lives, that, you know, saw him as selfish and egocentric. But he called himself out. He didn't sit there and push it under the rug and say, you know, I didn't do anything bad. And even if I did, what business of it is it of yours? To divinity, to the universe, to God. He didn't say that. He said, wow. Wow, I'm being punished. Wow, I messed up big. And he sought redemption. Yes, for the eyes of his creator, and in the eyes of his creator, but also in the eyes of himself, as a creation. 
We are poetry. We are art. We are living expressions of our desires, our wants, our needs, our morals, our, our passions. Here you are walking in that truth. You are planting the seeds. You are opening your third eye. You are finding yourself grounded in a way that you hadn't expected, led by spirit in a way that takes your breath away and can be very overwhelming. It leads you. It leads you to seeing the hurts, the pains, and disappointments that held you back. That did not walk with you. That made you question yourself, those who you thought were loyal to you, those who you thought loved you. It makes you look at things and say, how do I move forward from here? How do I embrace what I truly want and need when sometimes it is just so hard? And at your root with your heart, as you see the paths open up, it's no longer to be defined by the disappointments, by the hurts and the pains and the angers and the upsets. It's the healing that comes, that washes away the negativity, that moves you towards the passion of love and understanding. No one during this time, Sagittarius, can tell you how to love and who to be. You come from a place of such powerful authenticity that this moon is your guiding force. This moon also brings up fears, as the night sky does, as not being able to see clearly does. We as human beings, we're sight animals. We're sight hunters. Okay, The only animal on this earth that can see better than us are birds of prey, and that's astounding. And so when it is dark, and our vision is impaired. It becomes a time of fear. Fears come up, yes. But you are going to find that they do not define. They don't define you anymore. They are part of you, yes. We need fear to keep us safe, to move us forward, to you know, let us question, to have us evolve. But we do not need fear to define us, to hold us back, to keep us small, to keep us weak. You are seeing by the silvery light of the moon. You are embracing this feminine energy that is around you of the High Priestess and of Luna. You see what you desire from life. You see things more clearly, more passionately, more truthfully. You find that the moon inspires. And you find that you are inspired by that moon. You embrace wisdom. You move forward. You find your face, your truth, your passion, your desire. It leads you to the world opening to you in a way you hadn't expected or anticipated, in a way that you thought was closed. You thought that was for somebody else, but not for me. It is for you. It was meant for you. It is a part of you. Let it guide you forward. Let yourself see and understand do not close the doors, but open them. Claim what is rightfully yours. Claim a world without fear. You will fall. You will fail. Yes, that's what people do. But you will rise, and you will live in love and compassion for yourself and for those around you as you conquer the world, as it doesn't seem so vast and overwhelming and terrifying anymore. You've taken up your knowledge. You've set out on an adventure of a lifetime, an adventure of creation and passion and truth. You see your ships come in and also you send more ships out. You are not held back. You are not denied. You start this path and you continue on this path of where you were born to be of where you need to be and what you want most. It leads you to the chariot. It leads you to moving forward in such powerful determination and such passionate truth that it takes your breath away. And people don't expect that of you, Sagittarius, not during this time. There's a sense where they, they see you working through 
fears and doubts and they see you looking at the greater world and looking at what you desire and, and building it and, and constructing it and really making a solid foundation. But they still see you as a person who Spirit is saying, and I think it's rather rude, but Spirit is saying who can be, can be manipulated by their doubts, who can let fear run faster and harder than their heart, and who they could push around. And boy, are they in for a surprise, Sagittarius, because that's just not you. This is you being determined and dedicated. This is you flying to heights that you didn't expect but absolutely desire. This is you moving forward towards something so much more, so much greater, and so much more powerful than you had expected. Nobody can tell your heart what to do during this time, and nobody can hold you back. You have this cleansing coming forward. You have this release of heartbreak, pain, and disappointment, this flying towards your goals. You are rooted all in water sign energy, okay? Cancer right here, especially. And here's the thing. With cancers, people underestimate cancer because they're kind and loving and giving. But they are powerful and they are fierce. And when they step into their own, they step into a truth that is astounding and that they own with every single ounce of their being and depth of their heart. And that's what you're doing right here. You're stepping into that truth like nobody's business. Be mindful of negative Aries, okay, during this time. Because the negative Aries is like Nero, who plays his fiddle as Rome burns. As long as they get what they want, they are fine. Negative cancers are people who can be astoundingly emotionally manipulative and sometimes just emotionally cold because they've given too much once upon a time and they have nothing left to give. So spirit is giving a warning with this. But you here with this moon, this moon is your moon. This moon is a powerful, dedicated moon to you. To have you come together in a way that brings other people together. That has you looking at a bigger picture that isn't just about you, but is about everyone and everything. And now let's see what the moon has to say for herself. How will Sagittarius be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Sagittarius be affected for the September 2020 full moon. How will Sagittarius be affected for the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Oh, goodness. And show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. How will Sagittarius be affected by the September 2020 full moon? How will Sagittarius be affected by the September 2020 full moon? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic. We have growth. Assessing and fear. Yeah, you have those crows that I saw before that spirit showed us before. We have resilience. A new romantic cycle begins. Expect powerful change. I like that. Yep, Aries quite strong here. With the Aries new moon, it's time to take action. What do you need to release? You're very close to achieving your goals. So we have here you growing, you growing, you understanding, you looking at what it is that you want. And you grow on this earth and with this earth. Has you assessing the way that you want to move forward? Where is it that you want to be? What is it that you de desire from your life? What is it that you want? You're assessing, you're looking, you're sitting there and you're finding that certain things, especially with the five of pentacles right here and the clarity that comes from the ace of swords, Certain things that you thought were true, they aren't. They were lies. They were, they were half-truths. They were hurts. They were disappointments. They were the way that you dealt with anger at that time. And you find yourself moving towards something greater 
as you assess, as you understand, and as you release fear. Fear is a huge part. You are being born from it and redefined by it. Because fear always redefines us, always moves us in a way that we hadn't expected. So here you have the crows of October guiding you. You have the fear come around and makes you feel small and makes you feel doubtful and maybe even ashamed. As you have the healing come forward and as you are released, you then find that you fly and you release yourself from a cage, a cage you never wanted, but a cage that has been carried around by you nonetheless. And now it is your time. Now it is your truth. You're resilient. You have carried your world tree on your back. Now it's time to plant it and watch it grow. Now it's time to see that that resilience was not just to carry around your world tree forever and ever more. No. I sit there and say, I found my spot. I found what I want. And you might sit there and say, Dane, I haven't found my spot. I don't know what it is that I want, but you know what it is that you don't want. And that's a powerful truth. And here, as you look at things, you start to trust that inner guidance, that inner voice, the high priestess is with you. The high priestess, I really think of as like the Oracle of Delphi. The Oracle of Delphi was a person, this woman who sat in a cave and the Oracle changed, of course. But people came from all over the ancient world to listen to her, to hear her. She would give prophecies and they would spend their life figuring out what she was saying. Here's what I believe. Those prophecies aren't supposed to be figured out. They're supposed to be lived. They're supposed to be worked through our bodies, our souls, and our minds. Not in the way of, I will step back and see how it, uh, how it comes forward, but in the way of, I will step forward and see how those words help define me, help guide me, lead me living poetry that is your truth that is your power that is your release it enters you into a new romantic cycle it enters you into a time of balanced love and greater truth and you because of you entering into this cycle you expect powerful change and you can feel this powerful change coming here it's with the new moon eclipse so again the 17th of September very powerful time it leads you to the new moon in Aries. With the new moon in Aries, you have the full moon in Aries. This is a time to take action, a fiery climax approaches. This is a time to take action because a passionate truth approaches. A fiery blaze of what you desire and what you want leads you. Leads you to a greater understanding of the moon. Leads you within the passion of the moon and the world opening up. It brings you saying, what do I need to release? What am I holding on that instead of helping me is hindering me? What should be a gift but is actually a curse? Not a literal curse, but like a bowl and chain around the neck, which makes it impossible to swim forward. What is it that has defined me so, for so long that it feels like a hurt I can never live without? The pain becomes so pain is there all the time, that it is almost ignored. It's just a part of life. And what Spirit is saying, it's, it's not though. It's now a time to release. And as you release, you're very close to achieving your goals. You're very close to moving forward in the way that you want to and in the way that you need to. This leads you to the subconscious message of the moon balance coming forward balance and harmony being a part of you and as this balance comes you show the world the real you you show the world your truth and you live in that truth you walk in that truth as the oracle of Delphi did as the High Priestess does. It is a personal, private truth. It is a beautiful truth. And it is yours. Your subconscious tarot message is 
the Nine of Swords. Worry, doubt, and fear. Nightmares. Not being able to sleep well at night. Spirit is saying, if you are having trouble sleeping, okay, GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, ask your health care professional, but that can be very helpful for you. This is you looking at fears and doubts, questions and uncertainties. This is you knowing that you're very close to an end of a cycle and fearing what comes next because you've been taught to wait for that other shoe to drop. That life holds surprises that aren't always welcome. And that's true. But with the Nine of Swords, this is moving past the shadow of nightmares and moving into the truth of what you want. The moon illuminates what we are afraid of and moves us to what we deeply need. And it can be scary, but it's astoundingly necessary and astoundingly freeing. All right, Sagittarius, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we walk in peace and harmony to our truth and in our passion. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and harmony, Sagittarius.